Mera Michele Corridor. The JARC also mentioned that humanitarian organizations in Tigray are facing challenges in meeting the needs of people due to the depletion of basic supplies and the continued termination of basic services such as communication and banking. As we've been telling you, humanitarian organizations in Tigray face growing challenges in reaching people in need due to shortages of essential supplies, as well as continuing suspension of basic essential services, including banking, electricity, and communications. The spokesperson said that out of the 5.2 million people in Tigray who need food assistance every six weeks, the United Nations and partner organizations have only been able to reach 1.2 million in a span of six months. Dujaric also stated that the aid distributed this week was able to reach some 73,000 people and that the aid was not complete, with some receiving only pills and others oil. Uh, out of a range of 5.2 million people who should be receiving food every six weeks, we, along with our partners, have reached only 1.2 million people with food nearly six months after the current food di distributions, uh, current round of food distributions in Tigray got underway. Some 73,000 people received food assistance this week alone, but half of these people received only pulses um, and thousands received only cooking oil. No food feeding has been available in Tigray over the past week due to lack of food stocks. The spokesperson for the United Nations also stated that UN and partners were able to deliver 428 metric tons of humanitarian aid through air transport since July, and that this corresponds to just 11 trucks. UN airlifts between Addis and Michele are continuing, with about 76 metric tons of nutrition supplies flown in this week. In total, 428 metric tons of humanitarian supplies have been transported by air since July. This has been critical, but corresponds to only about 11 trucks, or half what could have been transported by uh, road convoy. Earlier this week, Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch issued a report documenting atrocities committed in Western Tigray, including an ethnic cleansing campaign that amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. The report said FANO, a paramilitary force from the Amhara region, Amhara Regional Forces, and Ethiopia's National Defense Forces, cooperated to seize Western Tigray in conflict that featured indiscriminate shelling, arbitrary detention, and execution of innocent civilians. This was later followed by an ethnic cleansing campaign where Amhara forces systematically displaced hundreds of thousands of Tigrans from Western Tigray in a bid to remove the majority of Tigran population. The human rights really groups conducted more than 400 interviews and used satellite imagery to prepare this extensive report on atrocities in Western Tigray. We had a brief stay with human rights expert Marathon Futui regarding this extensive report, and let's take a look what he has to say. Thank you, Atoma Ratu for Fatui for joining us here. So I'll go directly to my question. So the investigation by Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch details extensively atrocities committed in Tigray, in Western Tigray, by Ethiopia's National Defense Forces and militia from the Amhara region. The atrocities in Western Tigray uh, have been widely documented throughout the conflict. So I do not suppose you were surprised by their findings. Uh, but was there anything that stood out um, to you? Yeah, among the, th the things that stood out for me is actually the uh, methodology part of the investigation. Uh, I usually uh, envisage that any investigation on uh, atrocities, on gross human rights violations, on uh, a commission of international crimes shall take into account the necessary elements, shall see not only the incidents, but also the indicators, the lens through which you can check whether the uh, uh, things that I have mentioned are committed or not. Like, for example, when you investigate whether international crimes are committed or not, you have to take into account whether uh, the mental element for the commission of certain crime is uh, present or not, one of which is actually the specific intent, particularly when you go to genocide, because the investigation has uh, kept silent about whether genocide has been committed in Western Tigray or not. The ethnic cleansing campaign detailed in the investigation by these two human rights uh, groups is, uh, of course, 
just one, of, one feature of the violence committed uh, on Tigrans. I mean, could it be said that the ethnic cleansing campaign was just one feature of the genocide committed on the people of Tigray? Do you believe the human rights groups maybe shared away from that conclusion from, for some reason? Ethnic cleansing can consist of a bunch of crimes, like, for example, killing, murder, mass, uh, massacres, uh, torture, and others. Normally, ethnic cleansing will be genocide if the necessary mental element, uh, which is called a specific intent, is fulfilled. When you say specific intent, either it is desired by those who uh, commit the act and the planners behind all the atrocities, or at least there is the knowledge part. So in this case, I think it is conspicuous. It is very clear that it is genocide. Almost all the elements of the, uh, all the actors of genocide have been fulfilled, and they have been termed or they have been considered as ethnic cleansing. And so ethnic cleansing, uh, the one who is claiming that it is ethnic cleansing shall believe that the mental element is not fulfilled. However, in the case at hand, the mental element can be easily proved without going far, without going to any other indications, simply from the actors, from the actors themselves. Look, for example, the uh, people of Tigray in Western Tigray have been denied things necessary for living. Even being there, they have been denied from uh, humanitarian uh, assistance. They have been denied, according to the research itself, according to the investigation itself. They have been denied from uh, medicine, health facilities all their crops, all their means of livelihood is taken away. So, one, their life there is a condition of life which will ensure their partial or full destruction. As you have said, uh, they are shying away from uh, terming, uh, from calling it genocide. I think one of the reasons might be, uh, well, it might be said that uh, if they call it genocide, the a peace process might be hindered. If it is genocide, I believe that it should have been called genocide. Uh, the, atroc the atrocities are committed by Amhara militia and FANU. And before the atrocities are committed, and in fact in the course of the commission of the atrocities, a number of hate speech have been disseminated by Amhara media. This should have been considered. This should have been analyzed, whether it indicates a genocide or not. So they are shying away, and the reason might be, one reason might be, to, uh, well, uh, not to hinder the peace uh, process, but I believe that finding out the truth, the fact is one way of facilitating peace and reconciliation. The other reason to shy away from uh, calling it genocide might be to ensure or maintain, uh, well, territorial integrity, because genocide might entitle for self-determination, including secession. But the territorial integrity, I personally might have different opinion. However, uh, territorial integrity of Ethiopia shall not be at the expense of denying facts, shall not be maintained by denying facts, by hiding atrocities which are tantamount to genocide. In the recommendation section of the report, the human rights groups call for the establishment of the, uh, an AU-led uh, peacekeeping mission in western Tigray, classifying it a contested area. Do you believe this may be perhaps uh, set a dangerous precedent where one party, through violent occupation of an area, can establish some degree of legitimacy there? AU uh, has failed. I believe that the international committee has failed as far as the atrocities committed in Tigray is concerned. It could have been easily prevented. And it's not prevented. It's not prevented, not only it's not prevented, still it is going on. People are dying. People are dying because of starvation. And starvation is, by the way, one way of committing genocide. Because starvation, starvation is um, denial of all necessary things for life, so one thing, the legitimacy of EU, as far as handling the issue of Tigray, is actually pivotal. 
for me is not legitimate. It has failed. This recommendation cannot be a logical extension of the conclusion of the investigation. The investigation has uh, depicted uh, a number of uh, atrocities committed by Amhara uh, militia, Fano, and the uh, Ethiopian Defense Force. So, if you conclude that uh, certain uh, people has committed uh, certain atrocities, you do not reward them. But this recommendation seems to connect that certain atrocities has been committed by this, this, this. So the people who have committed these atrocities shall be rewarded by uh, bringing an, a kind of illegitimate organization. This rewards for the wrongdoer from the wrongdoer. There is one maxim in uh, this uh, legal studies which says that no one shall be benefited from his wrongdoing. So, Mara Militia, Fano, and others should not be, shall not be benefited from their wrongdoing. From their wrongdoing. I don't mean that uh, this shall be resolved by uh, armed struggle or by war. There shall be legal solution. But the legal solution shall first put the warring parties into status quo ante in their previous position. Then after that, there can be uh, a number of options, legal options. There can be uh, well constitutional mechanisms, even if it might be considered that this is uh, an extra constitutional issue, there can be other legal remedies. Thank you so much for joining us. We spoke with former president of Magala University and environmental expert, Professor Mr. Kohaile, who discussed the extent of the damage on Tigray's agricultural sector. The professor said the deliberate and systematic destruction on Tigray's agricultural sector has had a devastating impact on the region's capacity to achieve food security in the region. Reversing over 30 years of effort to increase agricultural production. The professor also said that addressing the humanitarian crisis on the ground would require the delivery of not only food aid, but also agricultural inputs such as fertilizers and pesticides. For more, Salome Tarlai reports. For 17 months, Ethiopian and Eritrean forces burned food crops, slaughtered livestock, and destroyed agricultural equipment, leading to a catastrophic humanitarian situation that has left more than 90% of the population in Tigray dependent on aid. But Professor Mutukohaile, a professor of environmental studies, says the siege on Tigray is not only devastating because it's blocking the delivery of aid, but also because essential agricultural inputs, such as fertilizer and chemical pesticides, are not being delivered into Tigray, putting into question future harvest. We are requesting the international community to sit with that, with all what the farmers are doing, in having, you know, crop productivity enhancement activities, we are demanding that along the humanitarian aid, the international community has to say yes, farmers of Tigray need inorganic fertilizer and chemicals to you know, increase their productivity and come out of you know, the syndrome of humanitarian aid. The humanitarian aid can be in place, but if we cannot sustain the next crop production to a higher level, then there would be a perpetual hunger, perpetual starvation, and death of people and children, particularly of malnutrition. Professor said that failure to gain access to much-needed agricultural inputs has forced farmers in Tigray to attempt to prepare composts in their own backyards. By their own initiative, we are assuming, and our farmers are doing it, that they have started preparing compost because they know that they couldn't get the, uh, the fertilizer they need in good time. So they are starting, you know, to make compost, to make every organic material available back to their land, to their soils, so that with the first rains coming in, they can they ha so somehow started plowing. Some, some would be starting very soon plowing. And then, of course, 
they will start also planting their crops. The Greece agricultural sector has shown an astronomical increase in production over the past 30 years as Ethiopian government's policy had primarily focused on developing the agricultural sector and improving the living standards of rural communities. I would like to reiterate a bit about the agriculture of Tigray, uh, particularly for the last 25-26 years. The first four years have been, you know, more of understanding the whole resources, the system and whatnot. But later on, later on when we started, you know, to intensify agriculture, inputs, particularly in terms of uh, outputs, in terms of crop production and crop productivity, was almost four quintals per hectare, which was very low. And when I compare it later on now in 2019, the studies that we made in 1919, the productivity per hectare of cereals, crops, reached 1.9 metric ton, which is about 19 quintals per hectare. And the productivity also increased from almost 400,000 metric ton, which is 4 million quintals, to about, you know, 19 quintals, 19 million quintals in 2019. The same thing with fertilizers. Fertilizer was about, you know, 40,000 quintals in the early 80s, mid 80s, early, uh, early 90s. And then now in 2019, it reached about 600,000 quintals of fertilizer. And this is measurable. This has been also, you know, uh, reported and verified also. So you can see there was incremental progress in terms of agricultural productivity and production. The deliberate and systematic destruction of Tigray's agricultural sector has caused a humanitarian catastrophe of magnificent proportions, leaving over 6.5 million people in dire need of humanitarian assistance. Tigray's health system has been one of the most affected by the conflict, with over 80% of its infrastructure destroyed. The Magadha district of the Ethiopian Red Cross Society has said that it has been forced to discontinue ambulance services owing to the seizure in Tigray that has blocked fuel from coming into the region. The society also revealed that over 60% of ambulance services are used by women in labor in need of emergency care to reach health facilities. For more, High Legal Reports. Since the start of the conflict in Tigray, the health system in the region, its equipment and facilities have been the primary targets of destruction, with more than 80% of the region health system said to have been destroyed. Now, Brahanu Mokonen, executive director for the Ethiopian Red Cross Society in Tigray, says the organization has been forced to discontinue ambulance services due to the Ethiopian government's blockade on fuel that has lasted for more than nine months now. Brahana also emphasized that deliberate destruction and looting by the occupying forces on Red Cross had resulted in the looting of over 148 ambulances, leaving the institution with less than half of the previous number of ambulances. Several ambulances have been looted and destroyed since the start of the war. We used remaining ambulances around 80 to 82 to continue to provide service in different districts including Makala, but we have now been forced to complete to stop due to lack of fuel. Brahan emphasized that ambulances are imperative to any health system, especially pregnant women who depended on ambulances to reach health facilities during care. Over 200,000 people in Tigray used ambulance services in Tigray every year of which over 60% were women in labor. Number of mothers giving birth at home has shown a significant increase, and this is leading to an increased rate of maternal mortality. No one can get ambulance service at this time. Many mothers are giving birth at home because they have no option. I know a woman who gave birth at home in my neighbor. There is no telecommunication service to call private ambulances, though they too have run out of fuel. The world must listen to the voice of mothers and children in Tigray. We need a solution. 
ambulance service must be restored and soon. The World Health Organization has announced that there are close to 4 million people in Tigray in dire need of medical attention. As the Ethiopian government maintains a blockade on all essential goods and services coming into Tigray, including medical supplies and food aid. One of the most devastating features of the ongoing siege has been the discontinuation of banking services, denying millions of Tigrans from their life savings. Commercial Bank of Ethiopia, Magala District, says it has been unable to provide services to its over 2 million customers, saying customers are being denied access to their life savings due to the ongoing siege. For more, Saron Zogai reports. One of the devastating features of the ongoing siege on Tigray has been the discontinuation of banking services that has resulted in economic chaos that has gone further in exasperating the humanitarian situation in Tigray. Girmay Desta is the chief of business operations at Magalla District of Ethiopia's Commercial Bank. The chief says the bank served over 2.2 million customers, all of whom are now facing hardships because they're not able to access savings they had deposited in banks. <laughs> We have over 2.2 million customers in Tigray. These customers have been saving for years for times like this, but our banks have not been able to help them access their deposits because of the siege that has severed all links to Ethiopia's National Bank. The discontinuation of networks and internet system essential for the provision of services have also stopped. We can't help our customers even as we see them starving to death on a daily basis. Grimai also fears that this will have a long-term impact in the confidence of customers on the banking system, which can lead to long-term impacts on Tigray's economy. For several years, we have been encouraging our customers to save their money in our bank. And now, when our customers ask for access to their savings, we are unable to help. That has a great impact. Grimai called the role of Ethiopia's National Bank to recognize its responsibility to the millions of customers in Tigray and allow banks in Tigray to resume services. <laughs> The National Bank had the responsibility to monitor the financial flow within the country and provide service to customers. Besieging a state and isolating it from other regions is a horrid act. The National Bank must allow for services to resume in Tigray. The discontinuation of banking services, in addition to a deliberate attack on Tigray's agricultural sector, has devastated Tigray, with more than 6.5 million people in Tigray said to be in dire need of humanitarian assistance. Our reporter spoke with members of Tigray's Veterans Association that say veterans of war who have faithfully served their country and their people have been targets of atrocities by Ethiopian and Eritrean forces in the ongoing conflict. The veterans also say that the veterans with disabilities have also been targets of atrocities by Ethiopian and Eritrean forces that have looted and destroyed medical equipments, wheelchairs and other essentials. For more, Wintakidan reports. Many that have honorably served their countries over the past decades have been the victims of the relentless attack on civilians in Tigray. This is especially true for war veterans that had various default for their country. Chark Oswal Damariam is the head of Tigray's Veterans Association, while Abraha Khal Ayu heads the Office for the Membership and Social Affairs. They say the atrocities committed on veterans of Tigray are among the most brutal. <laughs> Vicious atrocities were committed on veterans of Tigray during the war. They were murdered, beaten, made prisoners and displaced. Wealth they accumulated, bearing the pain they suffered while defending their country, was stolen and they have been left empty-handed. Killing and burning of veterans that are unable to see and walk in their own home is the worst of all atrocities. They killed them just because they were veterans. Veterans that didn't play any part in the ongoing conflict and didn't do anything to offend the invaders were murdered just because they were Tigran veterans. Knowing that they depend on it, the invaders took their wheelchairs, clothes and other essential equipments. The head says 
the association has not been able to locate many of its members and is yet to know their condition. They are people with special needs, people that are unable to see and walk because of injuries to their legs and are unable to run. How can they be murdered or treated badly just because they were freedom fighters? When they arrive in Tamala, the first thing they did was to kick out veterans from hospitals and then they cut the support of the government of Tigray used to provide for poor veterans. But the suffering of veterans is yet to end, with the Ethiopian government's 17 months long siege on Tigray, blocking the entry of medical supplies and other essentials from reaching the region, surely pushing these Cervantes to the brink. That's it from me for now. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.